Hey, hey, Davida here and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about goal setting and planning. I'm actually going to share with you a video that I put into my team group. One of the things that I get to do in my business is help other women build their anti-aging businesses as well. And so I had shared some tips and tricks for goal setting and for planning and how to get to the next level in your business. There's some practical things in there for social media and planning content. And I thought, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this up on my YouTube channel in case it helps anybody else. So your business might not be exactly like mine, but if you can take some of the tips and tricks and apply it to your personal business, I think that this will provide some value to, do, to you when it comes to goal setting and planning. So if that sounds like something that you would like to check out, stick around because today's video is just you for have you. two things in order to achieve your goals, no matter what they are. You need to have a measurable action plan and you need to have measurable actions that you're going to put in place for your goals and you have to have a plan. So you need to know what your goals are, you need to know what action steps are gonna get you there and you have to have a plan. So I guess technically it's kind of two, three things but I'm just wrapping two of those all into one. So the first thing is you need to set goals for yourself that are measurable and actionable but you don't always want every single goal that you set to revolve around money or a rank. And the reason that I say that is because sometimes there are other steps that we have to climb or there are other hurdles that we have to get over in order to hit a money goal or a rank goal. And so achieving all of those goals are also really good and worth celebrating. For example, you might need to just sit down and write out what are your goals. That's achieving one goal. You should give yourself a high five for doing that. Writing your stuff down, writing it out is going to help you immensely to get where you want to go. And if I only measured my uh, idea of success for myself and my life and my business based on rank or money, there would be spans of time where I would feel like I was accomplishing nothing. So you want to make sure that you have goals set out for yourself and things that you're giving yourself credit for. If you write out your goals, give yourself a high five. If you learn something about yourself that helps you be a better business owner or a better leader, give yourself a high five, okay? So make sure that you are not just patting yourself on the back when you achieve the big things. Give yourself pats on the back as you go along to all the little things that add up to the big thing because you can't get to the big thing without all the little things coming first. First and foremost, if you are working, if you are running and trying to work your business and get somewhere, you are achieving something. So give yourself credit for wherever you are, whatever you have accomplished, that is first and foremost. Two things. First is measurable goals. You have to have goals that are measurable. So for example, I could say, you know, this month I wanna hit market builder or I wanna hit managing market builder or I wanna hit market mentor. That's a great goal, right? Like trying to get to a specific rank is a great goal. Trying to get to a specific money place is a great goal, <clears throat> but how are you going to get there? So you need to know one, what is your goal? And two, how are you going to get there? What measurable steps can you take in order to achieve that goal this month? So just let me give you a couple of examples. Well, first of all, if you, like every month, uh, in our business, a really good goal to have is to build a block. Well, if that's your goal for this month, if you need four VIPs and one market partner in order to grow your business and achieve that goal for this month, what do you need to do to get those four VIPs? What do you need to do to get that one market partner? A few actionable goals 
is you could tell yourself, okay, I'm going to reach out to X amount of people so many days a week and offer them samples or offer to wash their hair or invite them over for a little meet Monet. I'm going to reach out to so many people per week and invite them to the opportunity video in At The Root. I'm going to uh, reach out to so many people and see if they want to get together for coffee and share about my business with them. You have to have things that you can measure so that at the end of the week on Friday or Sunday or whenever your week is over, you're able to look at what you did this week and check off your boxes of doing the right thing. Because if you do the right things <clears throat> enough times over and over and over and you learn to get better at them as you go over and over and over, you will eventually reach that goal. You got to be able to give yourself a high five. Maybe you didn't sign anyone up in your business this month, but maybe you did reach out to two people five days out of the week. And so you reached out to 10 people, or maybe you sent 10 sample packs or you washed 10 people's hair. Maybe they didn't buy today, but you always have to keep in mind that your work you do here, a lot of times shows up over here. You have to be able to measure if you're doing the things that need to be done in order for you to get where you want to go. So measurable, measurable goals will always, always, always help you and give yourself credit for what you did do. Always try to improve and get better at those things, but give yourself credit for the things that you did do. That's the first thing. The second thing that I feel like is just really, really incredibly important, especially if you want to use social media to build your business, if you, I feel like in this business, especially when you're first getting started, you have to do both of these things in order to really, really build. But we also know that we all just love it when people come to us and say, hey, I saw you talking about X, Y, Z, and I want to know more about this, right? There's just a whole different feel to it when someone comes to you and they're asking you questions. So you have to have the reach out goals to build your business, but you also need, if you want that, you also need to really think about how are you going to talk to people when you're not talking to people? How are you gonna show up on social media? How are you gonna put yourself out there for people? And that all revolves around content. What kind of content are you putting out into the world to help people? So the first thing you always wanna ask yourself about content is, is it helpful? Uh, is it valuable? Who is it talking to? What problem does it solve? Is it entertaining? Like how is it helping people? Because the first thing that I will tell you just very plain and simply is if the only things you're putting on social media are about sales or their little posts that are like, this is the best shampoo ever, what are you waiting for? Well, they're waiting for you to tell them why they would want it. You have to like think like the onlooker. You have to think like the consumer. You have to think like the person who's seeing your post and you have to assume they know nothing about it whatsoever. I'm sure you've all seen them, right? Scrolling through Facebook and you're seeing a post where someone is basically like, this is less than a cup of coffee, you know, per week, blah, 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 blah. What are you waiting for? You don't care about your health? I know you've had to have seen those. No, they're waiting for you to tell them why they need it. They're waiting for you to tell them why it is so good and how it will help them. So when you're creating content, this is what I this is what I think is a really good. This is what I was taught. This works for me. Throughout the week, you want to be posting about your life. You want to be posting about other things besides your business. You want to be posting about other things besides your product. Once a week if you talk about your product, once a week if you talk about your business and once a week if you talk about team or company stuff, that is a good amount, okay? Like that is a good amount for Facebook. The other thing you want to keep in mind is when you're posting on Facebook, too much posting is gonna make you compete with yourself in the newsfeed. So my rule of thumb for posting is if I put a post up in the morning and it's getting really good engagement and people are liking it and people are commenting it and people are seeing it, I do not post again that day because I don't wanna compete with myself in the newsfeed 
over a post that is still getting really good engagement. Well, I put up a post the other day about my new car. People are still commenting on that particular post. And so I haven't posted again because that's still getting really good engagement. And I don't want to knock that out of the running. So I hope that that extra little tip is helpful to you. You want to make sure that you're posting about like more than just one thing because that you you're more than just your business you're more than just your product and so people need to be able to connect with you on other levels okay always think about when you're gonna put those posts up what problem do they solve and who are you talking to you can't talk to every single person in every single post and if you try you're gonna talk to nobody okay so like People tell me a lot, like, you're really good with words or your post was really good. The reason that is, that has not come naturally. I have purposely made it my business to get better at that. And one of the most valuable pieces of advice that I have learned is in each post, you have to know who are you talking to? Who is that post for? Is it for the person who has thinning hair and a bald spot maybe and really needs some hair growth? Or is it for the person who has no volume in their hair, uh, their hair doesn't style well, and they have to wash it every single day? Is your post for that curly girl whose curls are always frizzy and she can't get them to do what she wants them to do? Who is your post for when it comes to the business or when it comes to the product? Same thing with your business. Who is that post for? Is that post for the busy mom who wants to be home with her babies. For example, the post I put up about my car. That post was me sharing something I feel was a huge accomplishment. I was a stay-at-home mom for a really long time. And then I did ministry. Well, you don't get into ministry for the money. And then when I was traveling and speaking, I mean, that was great, but it wasn't consistent income that I could like put down for, hey, I make this much per month. So whenever I had to go buy a new car or we had to buy whatever, all, part of that always had the financing, always had to go mostly in Matt's name. I purchased my car all by myself <laughs> because of my shampoo business. And so, the person that I was talking to in that particular post was one, me just simply sharing my honest story. And two, there's other people out there like me who want to accomplish something for themselves. I hope that makes sense. So like, who are you talking to? If I would have tried to talk to all kinds of people in that post, it would not have been as impactful. So just to kind of give you like an example, a real life example of what I mean when I talk about like, know who you're talking to. And sometimes your story is just going to talk to people who are most like you and that is okay because that's who you're going to connect with. Like I talk to a lot of women over 40 because dude, when I say jelly shoes or boom box, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like we share time. We have the same era in common. Okay. So don't overthink your own story. Just tell your story. The honest, truthful, bare bones story. I feel like these things have helped me the absolute most and while I still do those actionable goals that were my number one thing the reaching out and the inviting people I still do those I will tell you that over time being really consistent with my content people are coming to me more often now than before and like for example last month out of all the VIPs I signed up I think one of them I reached out to, the other five came to me or they were a referral from one of my customers because I take really good care of my customers and I let them know that they matter to me. You have to do the first part of this business. You have to do the reach outs and you have to do the measurable action steps. But if you ever want your business to get to a place where you're connecting with people genuinely and you're having people start to come to you and ask you questions, you also have to incorporate this content piece. Like it's just, it's a must. You can't, you can't attract people or really speak to people or engage with them on an emotional level if you don't. And the thing is selling is really a transfer of trust. So when you're connecting with people at that level of identifying with their particular problem or identifying with their particular need or connecting with them, 
you're transferring that trust that you have in your business and in your product, you're transferring that to someone else as they're reading through your stuff. And you might be thinking, I suck at that, I'm not good at that. Well, you can get good at it. If you want to get good at it, you can get good at it. You can get better. You can always, always, always improve and get better. Within those goals, okay, like what I talked about, like you have to have goals that are, you can give yourself a pat on the back for doing actions, not just ranks or money, but also personal development, which to me, I am not like eight different sections of all kinds of different development, right? Like to me, personal development, it's my becoming a better person, it's growing, you know, spiritually, it's growing and developing. All of that wrapped up into one, me becoming a better version of me. The second part of that is your business development, which is your skills. That is learning how to write better. That is learning about Facebook. That is learning about social media. And I know that there's only 24 hours in a day. And for a lot of you, you work full-time jobs or you have kids at home or, you know, whatever the case may be. And I know a lot of times people are like, oh, you have all the time in the world. I don't, you guys. My life is busy sometimes, like so busy that I feel like I have to make myself stop and breathe. And I don't function well like that. So my point though is you have to like plan, again, goals and planning when are you going to fit that in? When are you gonna have, like for me, I get up in the morning and I sit down and I read 30 minutes every single morning. And then when I'm like getting ready, I listen to a podcast as I'm getting ready. Every single day that I get ready. Some days I don't get ready. <laughs> I just don't care if I go. <laughs> but when are you going to fit that in? Do you wanna get better at like copywriting or content or like what do you wanna get better at? You have to be laser focused on one thing at a time or maybe two things uh, because if you're like, oh, I wanna learn this, I wanna learn that, I wanna learn this, you're gonna be really, really good at nothing and you're just gonna know bits and pieces. So my word of advice for you and encouragement to you is you can be anything you wanna be. You can get better at anything you wanna get better at. What is that one thing right now that you feel if I could just get better at this one thing, it would help me in my business? Is it recruiting? Is it talking about the business? Is it copywriting? Uh, copywriting is what I just talked, it's anything, like a post, a blog post, a Facebook post, a, a video, like whatever, like content, do you need to get better at planning? What is that one thing you can put on your map? Maybe you can only spend 30 minutes every Saturday learning that one thing. But if you spend 30 minutes every single Saturday for a month, you've now spent and invested two hours in your skills to become a better business person, to become a better entrepreneur. And I feel like these things are all one piece of a big whole. So two things, goals and planning. Your goals have to be measurable and your planning is essential Is essential because what's that saying? They say that uh, a goal without a plan is a wish. So there you have it. My tips and tricks for goal setting, planning, getting your content out there, providing value to people and getting more eyes on what you have to offer. If you already have a business that you love, I hope that you can take these tips and apply them to what you're already doing. And if you don't already have a business that you love, but you're looking to possibly start an online business, let's chat and see if what I do could also be a good fit for you. I have a survey linked below. It's a work with me survey. Just take that survey and we'll see how how I might be able to help you. Or if someone invited you to this video, get back with them and find out how they can get you the information you need to find out if what they do is a good fit for you also. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down because that is helpful to know as well. Hit subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell so that you get notified every time I release new content, which is once a week. This is Davida signing out. See you next time.